Hello everyone, my name is Tom and welcome, welcome, welcome to Garage Time. Today is a very important day because I am going to try to weld this fake RS flare onto the passenger side and I do not want to screw it up. So keep your fingers crossed. Today it's how to weld on an RS flare. <sighs> Garage Time. Sorry guys, I didn't know my microphone was dead. What I'm doing in this video segment is I have leveled the chassis to the approximate stance that I want as a finished car. And I'm trying to determine the high point on the fender arch of the original fender and marking it um, at the high point. So I'm using a carpenter square, like a traditional construction square with kind of a ruler taped onto it. And I'm sliding it back and forth until I can find the highest point on the, the fender arch. Okay, here in this segment, I am using a plumb bob and it's really hard to see because I'm using fishing line, but I have a weight attached to the bottom of the fishing line. And this is going through the highest point in the fender arch. And I'm trying to establish where the center point of the arch is for that bar that goes through the quarter windows. All right, now I'm just using my Sparky welder to attach the bar, the reference bar, to the, the quarter window sill. This is the same drill on the other side. And if you notice, there is a difference. If you, if you sort of look at the, the nut position relative to the center of the wheel, there is a subtle difference. And I did not want to trust the location of the wheel to center the arch. I wanted to use the OEM factory wheel arch location and not the, not the wheel because the wheel is adjustable for alignment. Toe in, toe out, camber, all that is adjustable. And I know my car's not aligned. And I also know that the position of the wheel changes as the suspension articulates. So I, I'm using, I'm not referencing the wheel, but it, it's interesting if you look side by side that the wheel is not centered in arch and the arch is left to right. All right, in this clip, I'm using a level to make sure that the chassis is level from left to right. So that bar that runs from the right quarter window to the left quarter window is continuous and it's level on both sides. So now I'm, I'm, I'm measuring the, or marking the position of the original fender arch using the plumb bob onto the tape. Okay, so I have the fender, you know, roughly clamped in place. And wh what I've done here is I have marked the height of the original fender. This is in black. The original fender is 23 millimeters from the uh, top of this bar to this portion of the arch, which is, is the same. So this portion of the arch we know from the SC and the RS is the, is the same. So 23 millimeters from here to here. And then the new flare here is marked in green um, and it's 25 millimeters. So from, from here to here, directly up, right there to right there is 25 millimeters. So it's, it's pretty close. Now the thing that's preventing me from making it exactly the same is this section down here is, is overlapping. This is overlapping, so this metal thickness is preventing this fender from going up and it's also preventing it from going in. So what I need to do at this point is start to, you know, mark the profile of the fender all the way around onto the original fender and just start cutting so I can get the clearance I need to shift it in the correct place. Also, I've marked on the RS fender these green dots continue where the black dots were. The green dots continue, these are directly overlaid on top of the black dots underneath it. So I have the fender lined up from left to right. I also have the torsion bar holes lined up, even though this was an extra piece I had to add. You can see this is the original torsion bar um, uh, depression and it's 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 roughly lined up it probably needs to shift a little bit this way but this is preventing it from shifting all the way over and then over here same problem from underneath there's a flange that goes in and that's preventing it from going up as well all right before I mark it I also want to use these templates that I made they were taken from a friend's car so this is the rear here's the uh, yeah front left front so it goes like this so this was taken just above the torsion bar and uh, I don't know if you can tell from that angle but this is this is fitting okay pretty nice I also have the arch in the center and this is fitting okay but 
it is a little bit low right at the weld seam. And I know part of that is because there was some damage to this fender before. And I, I pushed a little bit of it out, but it needs to come out even more. So it's okay to trim it, but it's gonna have to be addressed before it gets welded. So that's the center. And then in the rear, this clamp is kind of in the way, so I'll take it off real quick. In the rear, we have pretty good alignment like there. So at this point, I think it's safe to do a conservative cut and then fine tune it after it fits a little bit better once the original fender's out of the way. All right, here we go. It's only metal. Well, that was fun. Now it looks like an off-roader. Um, the cut is pretty, pretty smooth. Just need to go inside now and take all the undercoating off and work on this upper section a little bit. Uh, some of that previous damage was cut out, but there is still some depressed areas right here. It's a little bit sunken in. So it's easy now that the flare is removed to get a dolly back there and really stretch this section back out. Things are fitting much better now that it's relaxed and onto the tub without being interfered with the existing flare. So you can start to see some of the problems up here. This is caved in a little bit, so I got to stretch that back out. And it just looks like it's, it's uh, creating a little bit of a valley here. So this is uh, to be expected. A little hammer and dolly work in this section to just get it flat prior to welding. I'm also able to get that uh, 23 millimeter height up here at the top. I don't know if this is, you're able to see that, but I got it lined up here at the 10. And then here it's about 23, 24. Whew, okay, that job sucks. I got it done, I just powered through, um, but the undercoating is thick and it's, I used the wire wheel there as you could tell, but it's, uh, it's just tiring, it gets everywhere, it's in my hair, it's underneath my goggles, it, the grinder motor gets hot because it's a cheap Harbor Freight one and uh, you know, I just tried to get it done. I, my, I feel like I did 100 push-ups, but it's done and the undercoating was still doing well. I mean, pretty, it was intact for the most part. There was just one section right here in the middle that um, was cracked and failing. So I don't know if it's just cause it's old, which it is, or if it's from the damage on the body here, it might've split it open. And then, you know, it's just now starting to rust underneath there. So I need to flake a little bit more of that off anyways. So, the undercoating, even if I didn't do the flares, probably needed to be repaired a little bit in this upper section. But now the hard part is done. Um, it's out of there. It's all clean on the back side. I'll try to climb. I'll, I'll clean up the floor and I'll climb underneath there so you can kind of see what, what it looks like. Okay, right there you can see the section that was kind of cracking. Um, it's cracking up there and it's just starting to deteriorate underneath the undercoating. So if you have a car that looks like this, um, where you know this kind of stuff is just coming off then you know it's it's starting to get rust underneath there um, and this stuff was pretty thick right there uh, otherwise it's pretty clean i need a there's a little section there i missed but this is uh oh, another section right there in the black my goggles were fogging up so i couldn't really see what i was doing either This is the rear. I've just done a little more cleaning. This is about five minutes with my scraper. 
So I took off the you know cracked areas, all the flaking areas, and this is what I'm left with. Um, a lot of it came off all the way on that horizontal section. That's the quarter window. And then all the way back to the uh, latch plate was just loose, loose undercoating. So I don't want to strip everything off because I don't want to do a complete restoration on this car, but I do want to fix what's broken. And you can see some bare metal there, but no rust. It's just a good example of the uh, can of worms that's opened every time you do a project. That's why these things take so long. Here's what I got so far. These panels are fitting, you know, really tight together all the way up here. This is the, uh, the midpoint that we marked with the plumb bob. And then this section here, I have this little arch right here. This is the portion that's not mating up too well. And um, what I'm doing is I'm hitting this section um, hammer on dolly to stretch it out. So it's gonna flare it out to be even with this. So there's a, there's a, a ridge that goes all the way along here and this, this can't be low um, here in the middle. So I'm just using the hammer and dolly to stretch this out. Now this was probably due to some previous damage on this fender anyways. So I'm sort of fixing the damage and I'm, I'm pulling, it, pulling it out. If I push from the backside, it will, it will mate up. Um, but I don't want to weld this with all the pressure of having to have it push this up. I want it to be completely relaxed before I, before I attempt to weld it on. Okay, it's almost there. It doesn't take many hits to, to stretch that metal out, especially when it's uh, unconstrained like that in the open. It just, it just comes right out. So this is very light pressure. I'm just poking, poking with one finger to pull it forward. So I'm going to hammer just a little more and pull out that gap just a tiny bit more and then we're ready to start trimming and tacking. Okay, I've started to tack it in in the lower sections. You know, I, I uh, spent a lot of time getting this, this uh, torsion hole cover to line up to the existing fender. So I went ahead and put a, a tack in there and a tack in there. And then also back here, I, uh, I put some tacks in here just to make sure that this all lines up with the existing quarter panel and also has the right uh, shape based on my templates. So that's locked in place. I mean, I could always cut it if I need to, but now I'm just going along and fine tuning the gaps. So if I, you know, give it a little push back here, here's the gap. I mean, it's basically zero. So, uh, but here it's overlapping because I made that uh, conservative cut. So what I'm doing is I'm taking this door, this is a, um, you know, a tapered, tapered door shim for like house construction. So I'm, I'm sliding it in and then I'm just grinding along this top edge until it fits. And then I push the panels together until the gap is zero or, or a small gap. So I'm doing that all the way around. Um, I'm gonna tack, put a tack here on the top. Alrighty. So this is now in place. It's fully trimmed and tack welded every couple inches. So this is in its final position and um, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, there's no sinking or, or um, mismatched contours between the, the new and the original. So I'm really happy with the, with the fit so far. So this is, believe it or not, the hard part is done. Just getting it all the panels to align, all the gaps to be tight uh, is really the most difficult part. Um, I had to shrink this a little bit and I also had to stretch all the way into here just to get these two contours to, to line up. So this flare was probably cut a little too shallow. Um, it does extend, the flare does extend all the way into here. So I just had to stretch this portion out a little bit to mate up with that. But it's a very smooth transition and won't need much filler at all. Of course, it's not finished welding, but I'm gonna go um, little by little and get that to uh, keep its position. So also, um, I did make a little mistake. Right here, this gap is a little too thick, and only I had it correct, but then I, I wanted to make sure I had that 23 millimeter height from here to here, which means the height of the flare is correct relative to the um, reference. So I ended up having to shift the flare down, and when I did that, it opened up this gap a little bit. So, you know, 
it, it's not fun, but this is doable. So we'll just fill in that gap. It's probably a little more than a 16th of an inch. So I'll probably get some bigger filler rod and just go slow. Also, I have these, these templates from the friend's car and they are lining up pretty well. That's the front template. This is the um, arch template. It's not too bad. I didn't cut it out perfect on the on his car either. And then here's the rear, the rear. And here we are from the from the side. So that's all, guys. Um, I'm really pleased to get the bulk of this done. I know that the welding isn't done, but to me, that's the easiest part. And I don't want to rush it. So it's it's been a long day. I only have one day to work on the car this week. So rather than just zip along here with the welder and, and be in a hurry, I'd rather be able to take my time, go you know half inch by half inch, skip around, really avoid the distortions. So I don't want to rush it uh, at this point because it's going it's going very very well so I hope you like this video um, it's a lot of work to get this to to line up and I know sometimes it looks easy on TV but it's uh, it, it's it's a, it's a lot of work so um, if you're paying someone to do this job to your car you should tip them because it's it's not easy um, and it's nerve-wracking because you're cutting into what is the car so uh, if you like these videos, please hit the like button. Also subscribe to my channel. There'll be a new video next week. I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do, but I will figure out something. There's plenty to do on this car. So we'll see you next week.